Hello and welcome to my review channel. Today I will review Asus Tough Dash F15 gaming laptop. The laptop has the latest generation of Intel CPU i7 11370H, which is 4 core 10 nanometer CPU. It has NVIDIA RTX 3060, 16 GB of RAM, and 512 GB of SSD. This laptop is a premium build top aluminum button plastic. On the right hand side you have two USB and a ventilation and Kingston lock. On the back we have more ventilation. It also has this sleek design. When you close you see this indicator light. One for power, hard drive and another one for battery. There's a little bit of flex. This flex is where display exactly facing those lights and if you press it you will see the slight movement of the display on the left side we have more ventilation uh, we have a power inlet internet hdmi usb a, a thunderbolt uh, port which give you also a possibility to charge and use the external gpu the noticeable thing about this laptop is that the keyboard has a tooth color and it's part of the Asus Tough line. Backlighting of this keyboard you can see is that the greenish backlighting, it has a tree setting. You can uh, turn it on and off or set the one of the, this various setting using the keyboard functionality. You can also if you haven't uninstalled the software provided by ASUS, there is a functionality. You can go through the different uh, modes of the light, for example, beating, breezing, which is nice functionality if somebody interested in this kind of thing. For me, wasn't I always set it in the one mode, and it's really good. Another thing about this laptop, you notice when you turn it on, if you haven't changed the setting of the power plant you will see that that you will hear it in the fan they are around the thousand to two thousand rpm especially cpu one you can set it for silent mode but you will notice the heat under the laptop which is not advisable to reduce the fan speed significantly so now now that we have seen what this laptop looks like let's turn it on and then if you, you notice that the display of this laptop, it says it has a 250 nits, which is not that bright for a gaming laptop, especially in the premium level, but it's not that bad either. You have a 144 hertz display, full HD, which is for gaming, I think is adequate. But however, I will advise to have external monitor with the enough brightness and the refresh rate for competitive shooting games or if you want to enjoy full aspect of this laptop touchpad in this uh, laptop is premium it's plastic but it has a nice click to it nice feel to it and i think for gaming laptop in this price range is good the keyboard on this laptop it has a nice layout no number pad but it has a nice feeling to type nice travel and layout is good this one is a little bit weird because I got a discount due to the being Astri instead of Quartry. It has a nice premium build surface. It's a plastic. And the top you have to ventilation to suck hot air in and give from back and the sides. You have a, a nice bezel but no camera. You will notice it which is the weird part of this laptop. They could have put it there. It has a really good speaker, in my opinion. Let's listen in. You be a judge. I think it's good, but it's up to you. And for gaming laptop, normally we use headphone. Now the performance. To see the performance of the new Intel CPU on this laptop, I use Cinebench R23. I ran it immediately after unboxing. I'm emphasizing this part because it'll 
the outcome will really depend on the when you are running Cinebench or are you making sure that there is nothing in the background limiting the CPU performance. And the environmental condition is also important. I have done uh, all of my testers in the same condition to be able to compare Apple to Apple. One last point about the benchmarking result is that you need to understand there is uncertainty around 5 to 10% between their different run, different machine, different CPU, even in the same CPU. So you need to consider when comparing Cinebench result. And if two results came in 5% of each other, it does not tell you anything about which one is much better, unless you ran a thousand times to reduce your error. Now let's back to the, uh, our results. In this graph, I'm showing three plus one result. Three results, Windows laptop that I tested myself in the same condition and to make sure that the results are uh, verifiable. The last one I picked up for internet to have a comparison and I will replace it as soon as I get my hands on MacBook Pro. As you can see, the comparison between the latest generation of Intel CPU and the last generation of Intel CPU, 5 core and 6 core, shows that Intel has improved the performance of the single core because 4 core CPU performing as much as the last year, 6 core, 107050H. You need to understand also that differences here could be uh, an uncertainty between the measurement because I didn't run enough of the measurement to get a good statistical error. And also you can see that the 4-core Intel i5 does not even come close to the this year Intel 4-core i7. A MacBook Pro performing better, but this is the average value, so we need to be a little bit cautious about the, uh, interpreting this result. Overall, this laptop, a great laptop for the money you are paying. It has a great build, it has great hardware, and also you need to consider that with the current market and shortage of the CPU, Getting latest generation of CPU, although not comparable to AMD Ryzen series, but will give you good experience of playing game and doing your daily work. Alongside with this aspect of this laptop, there is one thing that I did not mention and I kept it for last, the battery life. Battery life of this laptop is impressive. I could go 8 hours without charging, doing normal work, with the medium setting. Thank you very much for joining my channel and please let me know if you have any question regarding this laptop or other laptop. Have a great day or night.